Good morning. We are still in Ningbing, and today we have decided to come to Mua Caves, which is on Noa Long Mountain. I am likely butchering that name, and I really apologize for that. It cost 15,000 dong to park our motorbike, which is under one Canadian dollar. And entrance was 100,000 dong per person, which equates to about $5.50 Canadian per person. One thing to note is that as you do go down the road to come to here, while this place definitely has its own parking, there are other people who will try and get you into their parking spaces instead. And they will try and do so pretty aggressively. They'll stand in the middle of the road and try and coax you in, but they will more often than not actually charge you a bit more. So it's worth just persevering and going down until you see the garage on the bike. If you put in the Hang Moi Eco Lodge, then that's the correct place to go. In terms of what this place is famous for, then apparently there is a temple and an amazing viewpoint for which we have to head up 500 steps. We're not feeling our best by all admissions because we've both come down with something coldy, I think. But for you, and probably for us too, we're going to pass a bit. Right at the base of the stairs, you have an option to go right to the viewpoint or left to Moa Cave. We chose to go to Moa Cave first and there's really not much to it. So I think what people really come here for is to climb the 500 stairs to get a bird's eye view over this area as well as see the pagoda that sits on top. So without further ado, we're going to head there now. Despite our appearance, this climb wasn't actually as bad as we thought it would be. Turns out 500 steps is not insurmountable for us, which is great. And the views up here are spectacular. You can see all the rice paddies and you can see all the way to Ningbing. It's pretty spectacular to have this bird's eye view. And what I didn't realize was down below, there's a walkway in the shape of a lotus flower, which I just think is really cool. Yeah, I think considering the fact that we paid $5.50 to get in each, then this is definitely worth the cost of admission and more. Just an amazing place. Shall we go get some lunch? Yeah, sounds great. I think we've earned it. <laughs> We're back for the third time. That's how much we love the bon mi.
While it is obviously a familiar place we went to for lunch, we did opt for something a little different. So I went for a special noodles, which was essentially noodles in a lovely sauce, which came with various different types of meat and a fried egg on top, and it was divine. And I got intrigued because there was something that was spring rolls with peanut butter, and anyone who knows me knows that I'm obsessed with peanut butter. Obsessed with this. It's probably one of my favorite foods, could be its own food group. I didn't expect the spring rolls to be in a bun. Me, I thought it was just gonna be like spring rolls with a peanut sauce or something. But nevertheless, it was delicious because it had the peanut sauce plus like the tangy sweet chili sauce, all the veggies in it still, as well as the spring rolls. And it was amazing. As I'm sure you can see, we're now back at our hostel and we're just gonna hang out here, do some work until it's dinner time. We tried a place a couple of nights ago because we were told that it is probably some of the best food that you're gonna have in Vietnam. And so it's proven. So with that, then we are back here at Restaurant Foot and to have another round of delicious pho. We've chosen to have the pho bo, which is the beef pho. For anyone who hasn't watched any of our previous videos, I'm usually not a big fan of anything soupy, so that includes like ramen and cow soy. I always love the flavor, it's just a texture thing. So I do still always try it. And I'll say, this is probably one of the best experiences I've had. That's how good it is. So you could say that this was phenomenal. I'm really sorry I had to do it. It's just coming up on seven o'clock. And so by our standards, we've had a bit of an early dinner, but that's because we have an overnight bus to catch at eight o'clock to our next city in Vietnam. This one is listed as a sleeper bus. Um, we've seen the pictures and it looks like you actually have some kind of like lie flat beds and things like that, which is a progressive upgrade from the other overnight buses that we've had so far in Southeast Asia. Our first one in Thailand was a nice seat with a recliner. The next one then had a footrest, which helped. And now we're getting essentially a completely flat seat. So that's great. And then I guess next time we're going to have to do one better and do a cabin. But in the meantime, very intrigued to see what this whole experience is going to be about. I mean, this is next level. It's unfortunately a tad on the small side for the likes of me, but anybody who is a few inches shorter would absolutely love this. And yeah, you get a little headphone jack in case the screen starts working anytime soon. You also have a couple of USB ports, a little light for your own little cabin, um, and then an LED just in case you want a night light. And then on top of that you get a free blanket and a water bottle. So, yeah, decent amenities so far. And I think you mentioned we got upgraded. The bus that we were intending on, which was a sleeper by all definitions, was full. So, yeah, we got this instead. Happy days. It's almost 7 a.m. So it's been nearly 11 hours since we left Ning Bing and we have just arrived in our next city. On a personal note, I think that's probably the most comfortable bus ride that I've ever experienced. I had plenty of room to stretch out and I could lie on my sides or my back pretty comfortably. This is the first bus ride where I didn't really get any like cramps or numbness or anything. Despite all of that, I still didn't really sleep well. I dozed, I tossed and turned but you still have the bus that jostles you around, the noise from the other passengers, the lights that go on and off when the bus stops. So despite it being way more comfortable, the sleeping situation, I'm not really sure it improved that much. What did you think? Yeah, basically the same. I think for me, because of the fact that it was just a little bit too short in the cabin, 
then actually the hardest part was trying to find like an appropriate sleeping position because essentially like there's no real space to like put your bag or anything like that away from where you're sleeping then you kind of have to figure out the right configuration where you can still sleep in spite of what else you brought on the bus with you. So that bus, the bus also using its horn pretty frequently and that's despite people sleeping on the bus, then yeah, thankfully still got a number of sleep cycles but it was less sleep than I would have hoped, let's put it that way. We're now just waiting for a grab to take us to our accommodation and hopefully we'll be able to check in so we can have a little bit of a nap before we go out exploring today. And when we do, then we'll take you along. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling.